Welcome to Escape This Podcast, a show that's a mix between tabletop role-playing and escape room puzzles. This is the 10th episode of season 12. Too many seasons. I'm, this, is, this is the season where I point out how many seasons too many seasons. Too many seasons. Too many episodes. Too many seasons. Too many Ugh. episodes. We're st- this is what are it. you That's doing it. here? We're stopping. We're stopping right now. <laughs> All right. That was easy. <laughs> Every episode we have guests come on and play through an audio escape room that exists just in our collective minds and some PDFs and a couple of Google Drive links and... And you can get the whole thing on itch. It's okay. It's, it exists in a lot of places, but it's an audio escape room. And this episode, we have two new guests. Firstly, from Join the Party and Tell Me About It and Games and Feelings and just every podcast in the entire world. It's Eric Silva. Welcome to the show. I produce every single podcast. That's true. No one talks about that. I'm <laughs> behind Mark Marin. I'm I'm Ira Glass. I just do a really good impression. Uh <laughs> Yeah, I produce all the shows. I'm so excited to be here. This is so great. I was super excited to have you. And joining you, we have also from Join the Party, but also from the Spirits podcast, we have Julia Shafini. Welcome. Hello, that's me. Hi. <laughs> I'm I'm very excited to have both of you on. You're, you're both new to the show. You're first time guests. Are you excited? Are you nervous? Both. Very much I'm both. I'm very excited. I think I've known about this show for like four years, and I've been trying to get on the show for four <laughs> years. <laughs> That's just the way it works. I don't know the social media stuff very well. I wasn't aware of this at all. Oh, we got we got one message four years ago, and I was like, Psh, maybe when they're Who's bigger this guy? and cooler. Who needs them? And then <laughs> block, <laughs> block. Don't need this guy. Then I unblocked and I and I yeah, and you got finally... muted immediately, Eric. You're like, oh, this guy wants to be on our podcast. Mute, so I never see those messages ever again. <laughs> Uh, no, no it's, it's wild. They threw it in the garbage. I don't know how they did I it. They printed, it the they printed out printed your tweet and then tossed it in the um, trash. No, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm excited to get on. We've had like a lot of like crossover in our circles. Uh, yes. So uh, for, for both, like Janet Varney, I know, was recently on an episode. It was on the last episode of Spirits podcast. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so she's been on a few times. And uh, Adel does uh, tell me about it with you, Eric, Adel yes. Rafai, and he's been on a few. So there's a lot of crossover so for people who are listening you're like oh i don't know if these people are going to be cool you now know how cool they are because we're in the same circles so how could they be anything but cool yes i'm best friends with janet varney if you asked her she definitely knows that yeah that's it same to adults so, yeah at all would you be like hey adult refi name your three best friends i'd be Top all best three friends eric 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 <laughs> <laughs> eric ira glass that's eric and eric that's also eric and eric yeah. <laughs> there you go Every time we have guests on the show, we always ask the same two questions to sort of get to know them, get to get ready for the show. And the first is, this is an escape room show. Why don't we start with Julia? What is your escape room experience? Oh, I'm glad we're going to embarrass me right off the front. I've never (laughs) done an escape room. Really? (laughs) Oh, never done one. Oh, God, this is your first one. Oh, no. (laughs) Why didn't I make it better? (laughs) I will say my favorite things are uh, bar trivia and also winning. So it feels (laughs) like this is going to be in the right category for me uh, (laughs) in general. Uh, But I I think I did like an online escape room that someone was like play testing Mm. at the beginning of the pandemic, maybe. And I think I lost because I was too nice and I didn't realize it was a competitive escape room where it was like, if you don't do the right thing, you die. And I let someone else (laughs) grab. Oh. Have the final puzzle piece before me and everyone died. <laughs> How rude. Okay, now Very I'm starting I, I'm starting to remember that our podcast can be a good way to introduce someone to escape rooms because it's highly unlikely that that's going to happen. Unlikely. Could, there's always an outside possibility that Eric's going to kill you halfway through this room. Hey, Eric, please don't. <laughs> and then, uh, Eric, same question for you. What is your escape room experience? I've done a fair number of escape rooms. I think that when I started started getting like adultly into games was kind of like around 2018 2019 and i didn't get a lot of i did some escape rooms but like you know 2020 kind of put the kibosh (laughs) on like doing it in person so i haven't like been able to do a lot of them recently but notoriously i did a escape room with some friends for a, a bachelor party in montreal and it was like jurassic park themed and the entire time i was feeling weird because this was like a friend from high school and mm. i felt like a weird hipster 
around all of his other like normie friends uh. and so like i had a lot of like built up resentment so during that entire time i did the entire escape room by myself for like, <laughs> like 15 minutes and i was really rude about the whole thing i'm like oh yeah this pterodactyl it's squawking morse code and one of the guys was like how do you know it's morse code and i'm like it's always morse code of course it's morse code you idiot <laughs> what are you even doing here <laughs> like a I, lot like, of I had never done an escape room i know it's always morse code <laughs> Like a lot of that, but it was not my proudest moment, but it was it definitely, the thing is uh, we're here because I professionally am uh, a game master. Mm. So mm. I'm going to get inside of your heads as being like people who have to make games for others. And then Julia is going to do all of the trivia stuff that I don't know how to do. I don't know what to do. I mean, it's also my job professionally to break all of Eric's puzzles. So that's, true. that's what oh. I'm here for. Perfect. Exciting. That leads us pretty smoothly into the second question, which is this is escape rooms mixed with a sort of tabletop role-playing style. So why don't we go reverse order this time? Eric, what is your tabletop role-playing experience? Yeah, I've been playing some form of tabletop RPGs since I think 2017, again, the time where I finally found my gamesmanship as an adult. We've been doing Join the Party, actual play podcast, for five, more than five years now. And I've been the DM the entire time. It's been great. Some call me the best DM in podcasting. I think you should as well. Uh, <laughs> and it's, I'm just very, I'm excited. I, I think about puzzles and making puzzles uh, and as they fit, like putting games inside of tabletop role-playing games, reminding ourselves that this is a game that we're playing even as we're role-playing. So I'm super excited to do this. And yes, I'm very excited to work alongside Julia because whenever we do things like this, I'm either doing it for her or competing against her. And I want to get out of the way, finally. <laughs> you should. You should. Uh, wonderful. And then, Julia, what is your tabletop role-playing experience? I think I've been pretty much playing tabletop RPGs for as long as Eric because he was my first DM. Mm -hmm. And we played a home game before Join the Party started as a podcast where famously Eric made me cry by making a panther that I thought was my dad. And <laughs> that was very fun. Then the panther died. and My yeah. second time DMing, I made Julia cry. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, maybe... Maybe I should keep doing this. All right. <laughs> oh yeah, I hate all the all the dice and the gaming. I don't enjoy any of that, but making people cry. No, I love the tears. This is fantastic. <laughs> And then I played a home game for the past five years or so. And then I joined as a full cast member on Join the Party in Campaign 2, which was our, our superhero campaign and was a lovely, lovely time. Join the Party is, is, I think it's a good one. For people who are looking to get into a show, it's very nice you've had these very clear stop and start points of finishing a full campaign, changing the settings. Your current setting is you're all pirates, but you're also fruit and you're also insects. Yeah, dude. <laughs> yeah, man. It's yeah, very it's great. It's, the first episode, it it sort of just glosses over that everybody's just like, yeah, and then you walk in, yeah, I'm like a I'm like a gourd. You're like, okay, <laughs> this guy's a gourd? Yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm a gourd. Don't worry about it. <laughs> that guy's a blueberry and that's fine. <laughs> yeah, there's a blueberry playing the piano. His name is Blueberry Joel. I don't know what you want from me. <laughs> the it's the form of actual play, and literally I could talk about this forever. And I think it's really interesting coming on a show that is using the actual play form as humans in real life. And I find that very interesting. So I mean, if you let me rhapsodize about the, the form, about the artistic mode we're participating in right now. Oh, I'm sure we'll go a very, very in-depth in our post-show, but please do a, yes. do a, do a yeah. little taster for the audience now. Well, the, the thing you're talking about is like we spend four episodes doing world building and me laying everything out. I was doing like collective, communal, non-GM'd, world building where everyone has a hand in the world and um, and so we do that for four episodes and then the first episode it's like well the fiction starts you wouldn't say that if you hopped into an anime or a cartoon or something it's like yeah we're in the world of Vertistello, which is a great green ringed world and in the middle is the great salt sea after the cascade came down because we laid all that out but we still i still gave it like a an avatar the last airbender introduction yeah. before it so it's like you're playing with so many different forms in the actual play space you're pulling from what we love about fantasy stories and just slipstream stories and, and cartoon stories. And at the same time, you got to put in the gamesmanship uh, mm -hmm. outside, but you can participate in that however much you want, depending on if you end up, I guess, like, it's almost like listening to the director's commentary if you're interested in listening to the uh, world building and character building episodes. 
Yeah. Mm. And I'm sure we'll talk about this later when we wrap up too, but there's something to be said about letting your players be involved in the world building and having yeah. them have stakes that kind of, you'd be like, oh, as we're playing the game, there's the thing that I mentioned in the world building. And like, mm. it becomes really important to you because it is <laughs> both your world and the world you're inhabiting, which is a really, really great concept and something that we incorporated both in our second campaign, which is our modern superhero campaign, our monster of the week, where we did a spooky summer camp, and now in nice. yeah. All right. So I think with that, we're 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 good to to get going. Danny, are you ready to whisk us away on a? Yeah, I've journey? got notes. This is easy for me. Yeah, that's true. You've already done all your work. How about you two? Are you two ready to start? Always. Yeah. What character should I be playing here? I I never get to be myself. So I'm just like, oh, it's like I don't have my clothes on. Oh, I feel naked. Don't worry. It'll be readily apparent as the introduction begins. Wonderful. Okay, great. Okay. The door clunks shut and the two of you stare at each other grimly. This is not where you thought today would lead you. And you can't guarantee it's a situation you can fix. Because even if you can escape the palace dungeon, you may not be able to escape your family drama. Yeah. Okay. So, tragically, your grandfather died five days ago. Your grandfather, the king. Both of his children, your mother and uncle, died in the war some years back. And this put the royal advisors in a bit of a bind when it came to interpreting the rules of succession. See, there's the two of you, who are twins, and yes. there's your twins! <laughs> and there's also your cousin, Sydney. Sydney can kick rocks! Sydney can pound sand! Yes, Sydney! <laughs> yes, Sydney! Thank you to Patreon donor Sydney for donating their name to this episode. <laughs> and also, Dang screw it. you, Patreon donor Sydney. Think you can get your hands on this kingdom? Eat this. <laughs> <laughs> now, your mother was older than Sydney's father, which should automatically put you two in line for the throne. But both of you are only six months from the age of majority. Sydney is actually an adult, and your kingdom frowns upon putting children in charge of a whole nation. I know, Why? rare, right? But it's very, it's very innovative in this day and age. So this morning, an agreement was finally reached. Sydney would be caretaker ruler for six months. Then the advisors would reconvene to decide on the new arrangement between Sydney and the two of you. Maybe there'll be just a power shift to you two. Maybe there'll be some sort of throne timeshare agreement. Whatever makes sense. And so Buy on you... for it. Buy on for it. Great. <laughs> so you were happy to agree to this. Uh, Sydney, not so much. The moment Sydney was put on the throne as first royal order was to have you arrested for sedition and thrown into the dungeons to be executed by morning. Ah, oh, great. That's how they get you. You don't plan on letting yourselves be executed, so you examine your surroundings, first of all, for anything helpful. Uh, yeah, this all looks like pretty normal dungeon stuff. There's the big bulky door in the west wall and a tiny barred window in the east wall. And at this point, if you like, you can start drawing a little map for yourself, if you'd like. Yeah, I've got to switch my notes page to my <laughs> map page now. Ooh, multiple pages. This is fancy. Oh, it's a small notebook. That's my problem. <laughs> <laughs> there are chains hanging from the north wall, an old sack in the southwest corner, and some graffiti scrawled in the southeast. The northeast corner has a mildewy, damp, sort of dripping spot. Yeah, and, uh, well, in the center of the room, th there's a skeleton. A prisoner, it seems, from long ago, who didn't even make it to the executioner's block. But, yeah, that all seems kind of useless. Hmm. And then from beyond the door, you hear a quiet cough of someone clearing their throat. It sounds like the servant who brought you down here. Royal Lord Sidney is not the first choice of many of us in this castle, nor the realm. If you can escape to the main gate... I have friends who can take you to a safe house, and we can plan our next move. I've made some small alterations to the dungeon. Not enough to be spotted with a casual look, but enough to get you to freedom. Do this and you'll be saving a lot more than just yourselves. And then some footsteps indicate that they're rushing away. I mean, well, you didn't plan on defying and overthrowing your cousin today, but if Sydney's going to try to get you killed, the least you can do is not let him. Brendan was supposed to give me a sandwich before he walked away. He he's gonna give me my lunch, and then we got thrown in the dungeon. So so you're solving a dungeon mystery on an empty stomach? Impossible. God, what am I supposed to do? I've never been hungry in my life. 
This is he just, was a BLT, my favourite. This is just how Sydney planned it. Sydney, cut to Sydney sitting on the throne with a BLT. <laughs> oh, I yes, bet he's eating you. in that weird way when he goes hum 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 hum, so everyone knows he's eating. See, it's this sort of bullying that's why you're down here. <laughs> you know, what? Sydney deserved it. <laughs> like, if we didn't bully him, he would have been even. He would have been an even worse autocrat. Besides, it's not bullying if it's just observation. <laughs> it's not bullying if it's true. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Meg, let's solve some puzzles. Yeah, let's solve some puzzles. Uh, Julia, now that we are twins, we do need to have uh, rhyming names. What do you think? Mm-hmm. Well, famously, we are doing a Patreon bonus for our characters where we play Battle of the Brontes. And myself and one of the other players, Brandon, are playing twins named Amber Jill and Amber Jane. Mm. <laughs> So maybe something along that line, certainly. Oh, sure. I know I know you love it rhyming. Yes. I thought, well, we the same, the similar thing. I thought like Daisy and Maisie would be fun. Okay. I'm into I don't it. Know. Are we are we the same gender, different genders? That's what totally we up to you. Yeah. Oh, Julia, well, this is a fantasy world. Why, why do I have to be bound by the, the, the gender right, binary right. here? Yeah, it, we're yeah. not even humans. We're probably like cranberry people or something. I think we're ducks. And we're just glossing right over it. Uh, hold <laughs> on. I got to adjust the room to make it yeah, duck Yeah, we're going to redraw a skeleton to look like a duck. <laughs> hold on. <laughs> I like Daisy and Maisie. I mean, I did just suggest that they were ducks, so Daisy kind of does fit hmm. the vibe of That's a duck. Yeah. I'll, be Ma- I'll be Maisie. You can be okay. Daisy. All right. All right. There was something that was shown on the Nancy Drew subreddit the other day, because the Nancy Drew damn. classic American books, and someone found a book from the 1960s UK about a girl child detective called Jancy. Jancy! That's really good. Oh, actually, Jancy. I think we have to change it to Nancy and Jancy now. Uh, okay, you want to be Jancy? Sure. Okay, well, I'm fancy, so we're fancy and Jancy. Okay. Fancy and Jancy. Fancy and Jancy. I'm the brains and the brawn while you're the face. That is true. I think I'm starting to support Sydney's rule. <laughs> hey, we're wonderful. <laughs> um, all right, you can start looking around and try and find some clues. Yeah, what intrigues you? The first thing I would love to do is, can we read the graffitis? We're on the same page already. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. You head over to the corner with the graffiti scrawled in the stone. It's just a single sentence. You can reach freedom outside. Oh, that's encouraging. Maybe a bit obvious, but okay. Someone was hopeful. All right. Oh, wait. Sorry. I wrote that. I wrote that to empower us. I'm sorry. Positive sorry, Jancy. Positive thinking very important. Jance, I'm saying. I'm saying. Fans, fans, you know, sometimes all you need is the secret, like the book yeah. that we read, and then we murdered the person who wrote it because it was a bad book. Yeah, because it, <laughs> it was heresy. It was silly. Uh, well, for everybody listening at home, that makes two episodes in a row where the secret has been referenced. <laughs> I would like to examine the old sack, please. The sack is not all that big, and looking at it, you suspect that, one, it might have been used as a scratchy pillow, but okay. also could have gone on a prisoner's head while they were walked to or from the dungeon. Fortunately, your servant friend did not make you suffer that indignity. Mm-hmm. Cool. Mm-hmm. Is there a seam in which to like open the sack with, or is it just kind of all sewn shut? Oh no, it, it definitely has an open side. Cool. And there's nothing inside, just like it's an empty you sack. You reach your hand in, and you Thank don't you. feel anything. Okay. Cool. All right. Well, I'm gonna put it over the skeleton's face because I'm concerned because I don't want to be embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> all right. What there if is zombie judges us. <laughs> uh, the skeleton's head has fallen a little to the side of the rest of its body, so it's very easy. Uh, now the sack has a skeleton head in it. Uh, okay. If Brandon said that he, there were some slight modifications, then let's go check out the chains because I feel like that's something that would be the most easily disguised. Hmm. I'm going to play a gentle tune on them. <laughs> <laughs> Too easy. Well, first we play like a marimba. It's like, oh my God, that sounds like my default alarm clock. How did you do that? Oh, wow. If Sydney can hear in the distance, he's going to be triggered by hearing his alarm sound. <laughs> yeah. I set it for 740, 745, 750, 755, and then I waited so he'll be lulled into a sense of sleep and then eight o'clock. <laughs> Again, this is why he hates us. 
So there are six chains hanging down this wall, just enough to dangle three people painfully by their wrists as they wait for executions. Mm. The points at which each chain is connected to the wall are all at different heights from one another. It would clearly make it extra uncomfortable, but also it would make sure that it could accommodate a person of any height who needs to be tortured for a while. How accessible. Mm. (laughs) We're an equal opportunity, Oubliette. Can I pull on some of the chains? Because I, I think that I'm definitely just going to try to mess around with them. Mm-hmm. Do if, if this has been altered, I want to just kind of be like, all right, I'm starting to see what's altered. I just want to pull on each one of the chains. Mm-hmm. You tug on the chains and there is resistance, certainly. Maybe the level of resistance is if you were pulling a heavy bucket up a well that's already full of water. So you have to put mm. a bit of effort. And if you let go, it goes right back in the wall with a bit of a snap. You wonder if there is something inside the wall that clicks and like registers that you have pulled. Ah. So you do that, and that seems to be the same for all of the chains. Maybe there's a certain order in which we have to do them, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, You want to check out the mildew? Yes. You follow the dripping sound in the mildewy corner. It's coming from somewhere deep inside the stone, actually. The whole corner is a bit moist. The drip must have been going on for some time, but sadly, not enough to structurally weaken any of the stones. But it has left some prominent staining in some of the grout, and you're going to see an image of that. Yes, people at home, you can see this image. There's a link in the show notes below. But Julia, would you like to describe what you're seeing for the audience? Yes. So I'm seeing one, two, three, four, five, six dots, promising, where the first is kind or the first two are kind of connected via an L shape. The next one starts at the top and then drips down. The fourth one starts at the top and drips down. And then the next two are kind of connected by a C shape as well. Oh, hell yeah. Okay. Um, Are the drips the same places where the chains are affixed to the wall? Like, is the first one up high, the second one short, the third and fourth ones are up high, etc.? Annoyingly, it doesn't seem to match up. It seems like those are just places where the drippiness got concentrated. Almost like it's an effect of uh, my tablet's art program's drip function. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I'm into it. That was um, good. I'm trying to look and see again. I'm trying to connect the graffiti with everything because I'm just <laughs> obsessed with the graffiti yeah. now. Oh, well, yeah. You maybe, never know. Maybe if we try to do it in an order in which it's like tall, short, tall, 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 short, pulling the chains that tall, might lead short. to something. Yeah. Uh, Are there four tall ones and two short, two short chains? Not really. They don't seem to match the positioning of these dots and it's hard to get them to match the positioning of the dots. Yeah. Mm, Okay. Now I'm wondering, is this also supposed to be like, well, no, it is pulling. I thought it would be be moved in some sort of way. Like we attach the chains to each other and do it, but I don't think that's the, I don't if, know if that's If this were a real physical escape room, 100% I would have put that in. That was right. incredibly difficult to put into audio medium. That's no, fair. no, but that's also not what you said about the mechanics. <laughs> so I don't think so. That's not what it is. No, I just want to know that that is a very fair escape room idea. See, I'm trying to get in your head. Mm. Humans make games, but humans don't do things that humans wouldn't do. That's why you don't break something in an escape room, because if they, it would be easy to do, because that, there's no fun in breaking someone's sword that they put into a styrofoam stone. Unless they tell you specifically, hey, you could probably break this, and then you break it. The, and Julia, I know you've never done an escape room I know. before. No 17-year-old <laughs> has ever given other people permission to break stuff in their, in their area. No, the 17-year-old's too busy breaking stuff themselves, Eric. Gosh. Well, not in their job, because this is the only one they can have until they go off to Dartmouth next uh, after the summer. <laughs> I went, uh, I have, obviously we got friends in the industry, so one day I went behind the scenes and I uh, got to watch all of the camera footage of groups running through the rooms, and one of them was a teenage birthday party. And there was a part of the room where they had gotten a small door to something open and then they'd left it open. And so, of course, at a point later in the room, they had sprinted from one end to the other and one of them just planted straight into it and snapped it right off. Oh, no. Uh, And then they had to, you know, they wouldn't get their deposit back. I assume there's a deposit when you go into an escape room. I don't know, though. Um, I think for that, it was just a sigh of resignation and they pull out a spare door. From their <laughs> stash of spares. 
<laughs> All right, here's my clue. Then, going off of that, I'm going to take the sack and put it over my head and tie it together so I can't breathe. That's definitely the clue. I just want to clarify, they did say we probably won't die at the end of this escape room, Eric. You might force yourself into that one yourself. <laughs> no. Let's, let's test. Tired. You know what? Let's test yourself. Let's see how long you can handle this, because the, the sack does not smell particularly good, so that might get you before anything else. So no, why that's not? A, that's okay. Uh, but then also... I... Maybe this room is overstimulating and being in the dark will help you for a bit. You can absolutely Dude. stick that sack on your head. In fact, I recommend it. All right, I'll put the, sta I'll put the sack on my head. Because uh, this escape room apparently wants kids to put sacks on their heads. And it's, it's not definitely plastic. Fits ruin it for everyone else. Yeah, sure, it's not I'll plastic. put the sack on my head. Yeah. It's, it's hessian, it's breathable. Well, while Fancy does that, I'm going to check out the barred window. All right, you head over there. And uh, Fancy, <laughs> in the midst of your hyperventilating, you have to call out to your twin, wait, there's something here. Because you did it, Eric. <laughs> there is something written on the inner lining of this sack. So Eric, you're <laughs> just <jumped> up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the greatest escape room player of all time. So you quickly remove it and you flip it inside out so that both of you can read it properly. And oh my, it looks like some employee who typically works down here really relished in their work. Let's take a look at that image. All right. Oh, um, my God. Eris, Jesus would you like Christ. to read what's inside this sack for the audience at home? After the headman's done his job, you're mine. I'll use your hand as your neck. Take out your shoulders, rip out half your ribs, stuff your toes into your hip sockets, and take your left leg, but stick its foot into the other leg. Yarr. And that, could you do it again, but like with an Edwin Mad Hatter style <laughs> voice? <laughs> oh, after the head after the dead man's done his job, you're mine. I'll use your hand as your neck. I'll take it out of your shoulders, rip out half your ribs, stuff it in your toes and up your hip sockets, and take your left leg, but stick its foot into the other leg. It's a bit more of a hokey pokey vibe with that one, I'd say. <laughs> I have True. to say, I've heard Eric do a lot of voices over the years. That was the first time I heard the like British pirate voice. Eric, that was great. <laughs> That you know, the fun. thing that I do, I just kind of like go into my head headspace. Julia, remind me I can do this for an extra I will. Party. Remind me tomorrow, tomorrow. when we do the party. Yeah. yeah. You gotta that say that for like, a good NPC. Yeah. Oh, all right, love. Uh, here's what I'm going to do. That was, it was Jason right. Satham as a pirate. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so you, for sure, incredible. I'm the smartest uh, player alive. Not only the best DM in podcasting. I mean, this, these are instructions to mess around with the skeleton, right? I want to yeah. follow the instructions and do and do the dang thing. You go. You take a look at that skeleton. It's got a lot of its bones. You're not that scholarly in science, so you're not sure which ones are missing exactly. But you've got the basic outline of a human body, and mm. you look closely and you spot something on the skeletal chest. Are those letters carved into some of the ribs? You look mm. further, and yeah, there are definitely letters there, and ribs are not the only place that you see them. So we're going to see another image. This one, oh. look, a lot of these images I polished up a little bit after playtesting. This one we thought was a special quality, so it has had no further editing. <laughs> Oh, oh, honestly, oh. it's adorable. I love it. It's not often I call a skeleton. Actually, no, that's not true. I was about to say it's not often I call a skeleton adorable. I just say that a lot. Now, we questioned earlier whether or not we were actually human in here. Can you take a look at that skull and analyze what species we yeah, might be? It's not quite human. I mean, oh, I, I personally love a chimpanzee, so like this is adorable <laughs> to me. Uh, well, yes, uh, Julia, do you want to give a, a rundown of what this skeleton looks like for people at home? Maybe I could do yeah. it. I haven't done one. Oh, it. okay. Oh, I can do it. So Wait. for people at home, I can I hey, Julia, do Can you give permission to the host? Look at this take you know, I'll allow it. I think maybe, I don't know. I just, I, I, I like describing because I never could do it anymore. I'm going to have a crack. Oh, all right. So for people at home, we're looking at a skeleton. That's it. Uh, no, for people at home, we're looking at a skeleton uh, and, it's, and it's lying on the ground. The head has been detached, although I believe at some point it was put in a sack. So who knows if it's anywhere nearby this skeleton Yeah, anymore. good point. <laughs> Uh, I w my head was in with the skeleton head in the sack when I discovered the note of there. Welcome to my sack. How are you? Um, <laughs> the skeleton is is lying on the floor, and yeah, and there are there are a few letters scratched into some of its bones. It's sort of 
shoulder blades say F A and I G. Its sternum perhaps says O G. Mm. One of its ribs says R E E, and the other says E E R. Its right hand has an N on it. One of its legs has an R on its femur and on its fibula. Helpfully, the right leg has the R's. The other one has an L on its femur and fibula. Or tibia. Uh, and then its left foot has ED scratched into it. And its right big toe says N-O. I'm such a moron. I'm looking at this at a weird angle. And I saw the toes on the left foot uh, are just a tiny bit blurry from my angle. So I went... That looks like that says Danny. Did I sign this picture? But it's just no, the toes. it's just some toes. It's just some toes. Wow. Yes, that vibe for you, though. It's a weirdly scratched skeleton. Can I ask a question mm. about the previous note? Uh, did I do, did I succeed? Did it go da 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 after I, I, did I move all the parts around on the skeleton? Or I just examined the skeleton closer and saw that there were stuff? Uh, this was just your examination state. Have a go at mm. manually doing some moving around if you would like to. This was what its original state was. This is a pre-messed oh, okay. with skeleton. Mm. This is what it's always looked like. I didn't know if I had solved the puzzle already or if this is what, like, oh, the, I, this is an instruction manual for the thing that I'm looking for. You'll no. learn how to play the tune of success on the chains later. Yeah, but no, so far you have not solved this puzzle. I had said before that, you know, we can just do this episode for as long as possible because my life is just divided into playing Tears of the Kingdom and not playing Tears of the Kingdom. Uh, yeah, so that's I'm just still not exactly playing Exactly right. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, I've, been, so I've been doing a little moving around while y'all were making jokes. Ooh. And <laughs> that's how teamwork that's... goes. Mm -hmm. oh, it's mm -hmm. beautiful. oh, wait, maybe I'm the face and you're the brains of the brawn. It's very possible, honestly. I, I haven't, like, solved anything by doing this, but, like, let me see what I got. Um, Do you want to? Yeah, why don't you read it out loud? Or have you started doing it? Because if you... I started doing it, but maybe I need yeah. your eyes on it too. So first thing is you'll do the your hand as your neck, which means that the N is going to go into the neck section. Yeah, there. that would go first for sure. Right. And then take out your shoulders, which I believe is the F-A and the I-G. Correct. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, and then... So Take out your shoulders, so, rip out half your ribs. So either removing the R-E-E -E or the E-E-R. Nice. Stuff your toes into your hip sockets, which I'm seeing is the N-O into the hips here underneath the R-E-E -R -E -E or the E-E-R. And then take off your left leg and then butt stick its foot to the, uh, butt stick its foot to the other leg. So that would be okay. the ED going into the R. Is I'm curious if it's a single R or if it's two R's since it's it's labeled twice. So there I are two R's there. Yeah, there are, they yeah. are separate yeah. bones. Okay. Okay, so, so we take out the R's. So it's two L's and then an ED. No, it's so it's take off your left leg, but stick the left foot to the other leg. So I think it would be like R R E D or R E D R. Right, but if we're taking off the left leg, see, this is where they're trying to mess with us because mm. to ruin our communication between two twins who <laughs> yeah. who have known each other forever. Fancy the dancing, left yeah. leg, the left leg, if we're looking at it down, the left leg has the R's on it. Well, we well remove that one. It's its it, left leg which has the L's on it. Ah, uh, oh, see. okay, that's my. I was that's trying to be so helpful by making the right leg the R's and the <laughs> left leg the L's just to avoid this mirroring confusion. Either way, it's always going to be confusing. <laughs> I thought you were intentionally messing with us, so it is the L's. You're right. <laughs> okay. Isn't that the worst thing when someone shows you a photo of a group of people and says, "I'm the one on the left." Oh, You're that's like, upsetting. Who's left? The left of the photo or the left of the people? Yep. And then, and then you just never talk to that person again. Hmm. You cut them out of your life forever. Yeah, uh, skeleton stage left. Ske yeah, yeah, skeleton stage left leg. Okay, so then Julia, I have or uh, Jance, I got Nog, and the, or no G, and then no green, I, or then it's either mm -hmm. R E E or E E R, and then no Nord N O O R R E D. N -O -O. Is there a word in here that I'm that we're missing? Uh, or the, I can't decide. Oh, I, can't I forgot the no. The R. Okay, so yeah, on. so it uh, starts with no. 
and then it goes G and then R E and E R and then Nord. Okay. I'm looking at that as well. So I have, yeah, I think we're going no. Oh, no green or red. There it is. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. <laughs> we did it. Okay. There it is. <laughs> I was like, I can't read. I don't know how to read. Hey, cut that so it sounded like it. <laughs> I've never read in my entire life. This is the problem that like, you did it very, still very efficiently and quickly. Mm -hmm. So there's less need for cuts. Yeah, you have to stumble a lot them. more Ooh. if you want us to cut out the solving. Oh, damn. Um, but yes, oh, so no. sticking all those skeleton bits together, it looks like it says no green or red. Okay. 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 Wonderful. Let me look at my map again now that we've no green figured or red. That out. No green or red. Let me look at the, the drips. Oh, there's six. Uh, there's six chains. Chain, chain, chain. It's a. Uh, it's a Roy G. Viv chain, right? Oh, so maybe. I wonder. Wait, so that's seven, also... isn't it? Hold on, hold on a second. <laughs> Roy G. Viv already has seven in it. And also, I, I always forget indigo. Uh, yeah. yeah. So... But also, Roy G. Viv <laughs> chain is not a term. That's no, yeah. not. Oh, said oh, it's not. Roy G. Viv chain. <laughs> you said it with such confidence, Eric. I was that like, was of course. Authoritative. You know. We all know the Roy G. Biv chain, right? Oh, oh, we've all God. heard of it. <laughs> How did you learn your colors? <laughs> I like the look of the chain. That was that was odd. The color. Okay, I that was what I associated with six. I guess if we're going with Roy G. Biv, it's seven. Mm. All right. Um, gonna... I usually we could also leave off indigo, which people do. So mm -hmm. that would that's where I jump to after some soundless voice. Maybe I don't know. Lil John the Jester jumped up and made fun of me for talking about the Roy G. Biv chain. Yeah, we don't even know if Indigo existed back then. Oh, they didn't even have it yet. Um, before yeah. we do that, can I check the barred window? Because Eric made a joke and then solved a puzzle earlier, but I was going to check out the barred <laughs> window. This is very true. <laughs> you had a very slow walk over that way that got interrupted. You head back for it. I looked at the window because I have ADHD and then. Eric was like, the skeleton. I was like, I forgot all about the window. Julia, Only the remember, skeleton. Now. I had a sack on my head that I put on for fun. So mm -hmm. do not give me credit, it's but I am the greatest. Fun. <laughs> <laughs> this window, it's about the width of your shoulders and the vertical length of it, pretty much exactly the size of your head. It is barred, so you couldn't get more than one arm through the gaps at any given time. The view is of one of the back courtyards, the execution yard, appropriately enough. Mm -hmm. Off in the center, you see the beheading block, and there's an axe and a basket that holds the decapitated heads. Nice. You hope none of it's in your immediate future. And uh, on one of the window bars, you spot a small marking. Yes, yeah, so uh, Julia, you can describe this bar mark ah, for everybody it's a at home. C. <laughs> it looks like a C. It also vaguely resembles the dripping, the final drippings from the mildew corner. It does. Mm. Huh. Uh, that would be four. Much like there's four bars. If I like moved them around at some point, how would I move iron bars, Julia? The bars Who can around, say? Yeah. Can I can I wiggle them at all? See if they move. You rattle the bars, and they do feel like they spin. It's definitely Ooh. beyond your strength to break them, but you give them a bit of a spin, and hey. You notice a little something on some of the other bars. Yeah. Let's see an Whoa. updated version. I know this one. I've been playing God of War a lot lately. Boy, yeah. spin yeah. those bars. Yeah. All right. Great. God, I hate when our dad calls us both boy. It's so confusing. <laughs> Good thing he's been dead in the war for so long. <laughs> so we don't have to deal with that anymore. Okay. He wasn't royalty. You never uh, acknowledged his authority anyway. He just married in. Mm. If I spin these again, do they reveal different shapes, or are these uh, the only no, ones that are available? These are the okay, cool. only shapes. Mm, interesting. Cool. All right, interesting. let's compare these to the derps. Yeah, because right now, the the L shape I see on there, and one of the down dashes. So sure. the only one that's like standing out to me that is not one of the shapes that we're seeing here is the the top. That's the only one I'm noticing that doesn't quite fit this grouping. I guess what I'm trying to figure out here is, like, what does this have to do with the chains? Because, mm. like, okay, it's in the drips, and it's in the bars, but, like, what is it trying to tell us? That's what I'm getting really stumped on. Mm -hmm. That's true. And who knows? There's still st stuff to look at around here. There is still stuff to look at around here. So we could always r come back to the spinning bars. Have you tried putting the bars on your head? That's worked out for me really well. <laughs> I, I try to remove the bars so that I could put them on my head. <laughs> They're stuck. 
Oh, no. I'll try, Fancy. I'll try. <laughs> you have succeeded at rotating the bars, and that's all you'll get for now. Okay. Yeah. All right. Final thing. Let's check out the door. Yeah. There must be, I, if, especially since Brendan was there. Uh, maybe mm-hmm. Brendan left something. Maybe Brendan left something there. Mayhaps. The door is hefty and secure. There isn't even a handle on your side. I've already described myself as hefty and secure, but what about the door, please? (laughs) It does have a food slot down low and up quite a bit higher. There is a round glass peephole. Uh, And just a little thing. uh, You notice that there is writing all over this door. Uh, festive, okay. mm. creepy, you can decide. We've got an image of it for uh, you. Yes, Eric, would you like to describe this ah, door for the listening right, audience at home? Go. Who can see it? It's in the show notes. There are a bunch of letters that are written in different colors. I don't know how they got crayons in here, but incredible that we're the, the prisoner drawing policy that we have in the kingdom for rehabilitation. We really should let them draw for longer before we immediately take them to the, to the guillotine. Um, so there are a lot of letters that are written in various colors, including red and green, but also blue, purple, yellow. So for example, there's an M that's red, a P that's blue, an R that's red, a U that's purple, an L that's yellow, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. There's some that starts above the peephole, then like two lines above the peephole, then a line below it, then three lines below. Julia, I assume that Gulia, you're you're ripping through this. Oh, baby, yeah. Hold on. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I can keep just like talking about the form yeah, of the actual about play while you, do, you. while you do this. I love it, bro. I love it. Go ahead. It's not uh, green or red. No green or red, right? No green, no red. I like I like that it's like justified. Like it's not left is it's not left aligned, it's not right aligned, it's not center. It's justified. It stretches across the whole thing. Oh, We've wow. all done Canva. Uh, uh, thank you. I want to thank you both specifically uh, for being in Australia, which birthed my favorite program of all time, Canva, which allows me to make graphics so easily. I've been trying to get them to sponsor me so much, but they just like do not care because I'm one guy in the United States. <laughs> who keeps telling them how much I love them. All, everything that we have, all the images are done just through Procreate. Just or occasionally a... MS Paint. Oh, that's also occasionally MS Paint. Oh, I'm sure. I don't know how to do graphic things at all. As you can tell well, from Canva the previous makes it super skeleton. simple. They're, they're well, not Canva giving you any money. Me. Don't tell them, do it. <laughs> Sponsor me. Sponsor me, Canva, please. Know. All right, I'm going to talk this out for you, Eric, just because I'm looking mm. at it right now. So the first two lines say uh pull chains once per basket okay and then the the bottom three i'm having a little trouble with i don't know why but i'm looking at it looks like h e and then i and then it's a g uh n t no 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 no, sorry no n t a uh and then something or it's get above the floor i think maybe I don't know. Uh, something above the floor, though. I G. Uh... Height above floor. Got it. Mm. The trick there oh, so... is that height is a word spelled ridiculously. Yes, and it it's is. Hard to All notice. Right. <laughs> so the full thing is pull chains once per basket. Height above floor. Okay. Have we found a basket yet? Oh, oh, the basket. It was outside. The basket for the heads. Oh. <laughs> Exciting stuff. Pull chains once per basket. Okay, so there's a basket outside, height above floor. No, Can we basket height. Like, it's the same height as the basket. Oh, a basket height. I thought this basket was like a gamers height. don't look up thing. <laughs> and we're, we're told that we need to look up because we never do. Classic, classic. All right, Pull so. Pull chains once per basket. Uh, okay, so then where is the basket? What's the basket height? Can I look at the basket outside again real quick through the barred window yeah sure so you've got the axe sitting on like a wooden chuck next to it is chuck the right word for I love, that? you know what i would never have picked it but you were 100 percent correct and that's then, a chalk baby yeah, the basket sitting next to it both of them they're far enough away that you can't really make out much detail about them all you can really say about the basket is i don't know it's larger than a grocery basket not that you ever collect your own groceries never <laughs> They named me Fancy. It's big enough that heads won't go <laughs> spilling out, but that's about it. That's you, you just can't quite tell from here. Is it on a raised platform mm-hmm. as gallows are usually are? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, there was a platform. I think I think we have to pull the chains that are the same height as the basket. So like maybe the 
either the higher ones or the lower ones is what my thing. Yeah. The so problem the, is the, it's, the, just, it's, it's, it's it's such a distance that you're worried that your perception of height is probably a little bit off right now. That's probably true. So sure. It's very hard to judge. Now, can you just remind me for the chains, mm -hmm. are some of them at the same height as each other or are some of no, them? No, they're all a little bit different. Oh, okay. Mm. Hey, can you think about that? I have a question. Mm -hmm. Was the graffiti carved into the stone? Was it paint? What, what, what was it? Mm -hmm. It was painted and none of the letters are red or green. Thank you. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. in your head now, Eric. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> I'm the player. <laughs> you should be. <laughs> I don't have to run this. You run it. I'm good. I'm <laughs> participating. <laughs> I it's I wish I wish I could figure out what the shapes are that are mm -hmm. on the bars and the drips. So we have the graffiti, which is you can reach freedom outside. I still don't know what we're doing with that. Seem, seems rude, but OK. <laughs> seems rude. Seems like just we said it was motivating before. Now I don't think so. Yeah. Um, um, can we turn over the skeleton? Is there anything on the other side? No, you have covered the skeleton. The sack we did. Yep. Yeah, the, the chains seem to be the final thing, but I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on there. Yeah, all you know now about those chains is that you should pull them once per basket height above floor, but that has yes. not really yielded a solution for you. Can I look out the, the peephole? Oh, good point. Or put my ha and or put my hand through the slot? Maybe there's a basket maybe there. Brendan, maybe Brendan gave me lunch and came back. Take your pick. Which of those would you like to deal with first? People, I'm hungry. I'm oh, sorry, Eric. it's slot. I'm hungry. <laughs> Eric, what we should do is I'm going to get on top of fancy shoulders and look through the peephole while you look through the slot. Yeah. Perfect. Ah, right. uh, we invented this. <laughs> so this Let's is... find a trench coat and pretend to be another person. I'm old enough to be king. I'm a grown man. <laughs> All right. We're 35 years old together. <laughs> I was about to say that, but I'm doing math in my head. Damn it. <laughs> Oh. So this food slot, it is very low to the ground and you can, you peek through it and you can't really see much. So instead you stick a hand through it and feel at the ground right at the base and ew, 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 what did you just stick your hand in? Okay, well there is food there. So you, you take it, you find the corners of a tray and you pull it through and take a look. And um, oh boy, yeah, this is definitely a prisoner meal. Fantastic. You're learning a lot about how your castle works here. Because what you see is a plate, the main course, boiled tree gum, which is fantastic for chewing, makes your teeth get nice and strong, but it tastes really bland and it's very difficult to swallow. You hear that you're not supposed to and it can't be digested all that well. No. And uh, the perfect side dish is a saucer full of cold fatty grease. And that's what you stuck your hand in. Yum. Very good. Yeah, let's hold me over for a little bit. Mm. <laughs> Just chewing on it like it's gum. Exactly. Yeah. I bring it inside. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You brought it in. Okay. You're looking at it. You're free to chew. Oh yeah, I'll start chewing <laughs> oh, on this. God. It's while you look through the people. It's unpleasant, but it keeps you focused. Now, as for this peephole, since you're standing on some shoulders, you can reach up. You try to look through it. But like most peepholes, it's probably mostly one way because you don't really get anything. Mm. It's a perfectly round piece of glass, but it's a little bit too small for the hole that's been carved out for it. So instead of being flush with the door, it's like been pushed in a little bit and it's kind of loose around the edges. Can I pull it out? Annoyingly, because it's been pushed in to that extent, oh. you, just, you can't you get can't finger get purchase. Grip. Wait, chew it. We'll use the gum to pull it out like you did with that the gum once. Eric has a great story where he used gum and like a magnet to get a air pod out of a sewer grate. And that's what I want to do. You wrench that chewed gum out of Fancy's I mouth. I was chewing that. We I'm need so it. hungry. And you it mash it. <laughs> you mash it against the little glass and that gives you exactly the holding power you need to pull it out. So now you have this round peephole piece of glass. We and did it. You take a look through but from the proper side and it distorts things in that standard fisheye way. It gives a really good magnification. I can I can determine the height of the basket now from a distance. <laughs> Maybe. You, 
You head over to the window. By, by the way, you left me, me maybe the not. Gumbat. I want no. the gum back. I stick it fully back into your mouth with my full hand. <laughs> mm, I'm fancy. <laughs> I'm Jancy. <laughs> and Jancy, you take that peephole back to the window. You hold it up to your eye. And sure enough, everything that you can see out there is magnified. So you can see the execution platform properly. Not only now do you see the head basket a lot more clearly, which... Looks like it's got some uh, life-sized pattern going on. And mm. there is also something inscribed on the head of the axe as well. It's a shame most of it's buried in wood, but let's take a look at that. All right, there is a link. Uh, people at home, you can see this magnified image yourself, but Jancy Julia will describe it to you. <laughs> so first off, I just want to point out the basket, which just has a bunch of like heads with X's as the <laughs> pattern on the head. Fantastic. That's Love pretty funny. It. And then the axe, while we can't see most of it, I'm just going to zoom in real quick. It looks like a, what looks to me to be a four, a two, and an S with other things yeah. past it. But for now, we can't find out. So that's what we'll I'm see. getting to. All right. Four, two, and S. All right. I'll keep that open. See, that's funny. That's what I thought because these, the drips. Sure do look like numbers. They like do. it's four one one nine is what I thought the is what I was thinking. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I wonder the bars the bars don't give me any numbers necessarily, but that's what I'm getting from the from the things. But again, there's no code or anything right now. So hmm. I'm what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the head that we already removed from the skeleton because we didn't want yes. it looking at us, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I am going to determine using the head how tall two heads is because that seems to be the height of the yeah. basket there yes oh and we're gonna pull the chains once each to that height cool or so actually you... pull chains once per basket height above floor so maybe yeah. we pull oh, them you... twice each no you got it you got it, it. Sounded okay. 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 julia Great. the sound effect went off we solved the puzzle oh well <laughs> oh, yeah. ah. <laughs> So you use the skull. Sometimes it's a bit hard to be accurate. So uh, you grab Fancy as well and make her put he her head there so mm -hmm. that you can actually get a good accurate count. And, and mark it uh, with the like uh, the oil from the, the cup that we pulled inside. Oh, clever. Mm -hmm. And you do indeed manage to count. So the leftmost chain is 16 heads high. The next one, 20 heads high. Then 12, Whoa. 22, 8, 18. So we'll divide each of those by two, which means it'll be like eight, 10, six, 11, four, and Julia, math. Why are we math, dividing nine. that by two? Why are we dividing because that by two? Because it's each head we measured. Those were, it was 16 heads, 20 heads, et cetera. And the basket is equal to two heads. It's two heads high. Yeah. Right. All right. Yes. So it'll be from left to right, eight, 10, six, 11, four, nine. You pull on the chains that many times, you feel the slight resistance and the satisfying snapback of each one. You count carefully. And when you do that last ninth pull on the final chain, it gives a bit of a different sounding click. A sound My hand is still fully in the grease. <laughs> it's, it's comforting. <laughs> just I'm, just nice standing, now. I'm standing there with next to you, hand in grease, and be like, I gotta hold on to this. We and don't, don't forget the chewing it. noises. <laughs> Sorry, no, that's Sydney. We don't do that. We make fun no, of Sydney for doing loudly. that. No, we don't chew loudly. That's uh, Sydney's thing. A sound comes from above your head, the grinding of rock on rock. One of the ceiling stones is shifting. Ooh. And from the space above, something falls. It glints. It looks sharp. So you dart out of the way and it clatters to the floor. It's an axe head. Oh, well, a, a piece of an axe head. It must be an old, very broken one of the executioners. Let's Pick it up go. to take a look, and there is a little something carved into it. One more image for you. I was trying to find... I was looking for axe, but it's labelled other axe. <laughs> Classic. So we're looking at four... It's like four V... Wait, hold on. Yeah, there's yeah. definitely some more missing in between your two bits ah, of axe that you can see. Yeah, you don't have a full three, axe. Four... Okay, Dash. so I will have four, I'm going to say four, space, 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 W, N, maybe down. Two, something, H, T, and then S, another thing, and R, E. Yeah. Okay. I wonder, I, I'm going to assume, if can we assume it's down? 
Do you think that's a good assumption? Four, like, yeah, so I, four I, down. I was putting this in, like, writing, you know, when you do Sudoku in in pencil, you write <laughs> something in, but you don't feel committed to oh, it? Oh, yeah. Okay, so funny. maybe, I think that maybe there's only two letters in between that can tell four. us some stuff. Ah, oh, who knows what the Axeman's handwriting is like and how much could fit where. Maybe two right <laughs> for the second one? Oh, yeah, that's true. And that's, then... Yeah, that's pretty close. That would fit. And then, is that an S or a five, you think? I think it's an S. Okay, and then something R-E. Four down, two right, S something. That so S- there's only a few letters. It's either two or three letters. Mm, mm-hmm. Because the Axeman has a variable handwriting. Yes. Um, hey, I is a very short letter. It can fit that is in. True. I, that is true. No, that's true. I'm not I'm not besmirching the Axeman. I'm just you, t- oh, meeting the Axeman never, where they are. Never besmirch the Axeman. The Axeman drew man. the night. Nice- he can do whatever he wants. The Axeman drew the nice heads on it. Like, I have a great job. <laughs> I'm not besmirching. Okay. So now I don't know. So here, here's the other thing, uh, <laughs> Jancy, is that I, I don't know what we're, what we're, what we're ultimately trying to solve. I thought mm, the final yeah. thing were the chains. Mm. And now I don't know. I think we are going to need to figure out the barred window for sure. For sure. Um, I guess I guess the drips and the barred window. Ultimately, I think we're trying to pop the barred window out. Yeah. Because we can't pull them, but we certainly can twist them. And I wonder if we can twist in some sort of direction where that would work. But how do you twist down? You can reach freedom outside. Can I put my hand out the window again and do similar? Now maybe I use the, my greased up hand so it's mm. easier for me to, mm. to put my hand through the bars. Your arm can make it all the way through the center gap without too much difficulty. So that's the one you pick. Um, You feel just a lot of the nice even stones around there. And, you know, there's a lot. Okay. You've got a decent amount of reach. Um, Anywhere in particular you want to feel around? Um, I would just a big circle. If possible, just big trying to get as circle. far a big circle, trying to get as far reach as I can. I mean, can I, can I slip through, shove my hand through any of the other bars? Because uh, you up? you get a bit stuck at the bicep between the other okay. ones. The center one really seems like just slightly wider. Uh, but yeah, you you feel around. Some of the stones are smooth, some of them are rough. But again, there's a lot of them. You don't really have the time or the tactile dexterity to really go into detail about all of them unless there's how about the ones down and to the right <laughs> how about i how about i do four stones down and two to the right exactly ah. yeah. would that be good would that be you fun? count four stones down and then two over to the right and this is indeed one of the stones with a bit of roughness to it you mm-hmm. feel a tiny round shape sticking out of the stone attached to it but made of a different material a button maybe and prison, you prison, feel prison. around and oh wait hold on beside it there's another one a pointier one triangular maybe and you keep going and oh square yeah, square there is there a more. square one oh, is square. there a square one you keep feeling around and yes one of them has the unmistakable <laughs> outline of a square <laughs> Woo! julia knows words yeah we're gonna press it. <laughs> <laughs> You push in the square button. It presses actually way deeper than you thought. It feels like it's actually coming into the wall quite a lot more. And, oh, there must be some weird internal mechanics going on because right in front of your chest, a piece of stone pops out and falls away. Whoa. Oh. You take a look at what's there and, ooh, you feel a spark of hope. (gasps) Inside this hole is a grate behind which you can see four metal bars the yes. lower segments of the very same bars that are blocking the window. Yes, and yes, down here, yes. it looks like they have room to move. With only one problem, the grate is locked with a four-digit lock. Mm. Oh, that's 4119, my man. Yeah. That's both of our birthdays put together <laughs> somehow. Oh, you give that a go and, oh, it, it doesn't work. It's mm. not 4119. Oh, okay. I'll do it again because obviously I did four one one eight and I missed it up. Uh, we always like to bake that into the rooms that you fumble with the lock. <laughs> now it works perfectly. No, I, I, I failed my dexterity check and I had to do it again because no. I I had grease on my hands and that was oh hard. yeah, that's rookie error really. <laughs> okay, so it's not four one one nine. 
Remind the audience, where did you get the 4119? From the drips. Okay, so uh, uh, hold on. I just, I need to write things. Uh, four, four, seven. Oh, you're zero. right. Uh, oh, are you putting the two, you're putting the thingies together? Yeah. Uh, and yeah. then is that, what, what, what number is that? Four, is seven, zero, eight. That's an eight. Eight, eight. Okay. So that was oh, you yeah. taking the bar <laughs> symbols and into uh, overlaying them on top of the drip symbols. Yeah. Yes, Julia, yes, yes. I want you to know that I have not come up with anything since I accidentally put a sack <laughs> on my head. That's the hey, you you just reached out the window. Yeah, that yeah. was yeah. very the important. Puzzle. And you I said, was... I'm going to do a big circle. <laughs> a big circle. <laughs> with 4708, the lock clicks and you can push the grate aside and reach the bases of these bars. You yeah. grab one and you find yeah. that from here, you can slide it all the way down and out, and they no longer block the little window. That, that wasn't our birthday at all. Our birthday is the fourth of the eleventh month in the ninth uh, in the ninth hall of the sun. Yes, <gasps> you know what? That's Sydney's birthday. The only reason it's I Sydney's remember birthday. the only reason I remember is because he made a big fuss when we forgot it last year. <laughs> Was Brendan uh, was Brendan trying to tell us we should remember Sydney's birthday? Maybe for no. revenge? No. Like we can yes. make a song about Kill it. Sydney on his birthday. Exactly. That's true. <laughs> Most likely they they just grabbed the lock from somewhere else in the castle and just went, This one'll do. <laughs> yep. That's true. It was, it was Sydney's locker <laughs> lock that he uses when he keeps his gym shorts. <laughs> uh so what's your next move? We did a bit for an extended period of time. Can you re-describe <laughs> what's happening? There you are have... no more bars on the window. Yep, you the have debarred have that window. We crawl through the window? Question After being there? greased up? Yeah, we grease each other up very, like, not sexually, but, like, intimately. <laughs> <laughs> Twins in a dungeon greasing each other up is mm -hmm. a big it's category on the internet. The door. Oh. I read that manga. It's, got, it's on Amazon. <laughs> it's it's really thing. highly rated for some reason. It's a good thing that you chose to do that. It's not great for your clothes, but your shoulders probably would have gotten stuck in that window if you hadn't. So famously, you coat we have yourselves. very broad shoulders. <laughs> mm. You coat yourselves in this slippery, nasty stuff. It's not the sort of indignity that you've ever had to suffer in your royal lives, but you know what? You're strong enough to push through this. I give a hearty middle finger to the graffiti, which helps us not at all. <laughs> it taught us we have to go outside to reach freedom. I think that's totally fair. I don't know why I carved that into the wall. It didn't <laughs> you were help really us at all. channeling the secret. It's okay. I guess so. The so, secret is that I'm full of crap, unfortunately. <laughs> oh no. Greased up, you grab onto the window ledge, you pull yourselves up, you've got that upper arm strength, and you are able to squeeze in and slide through all the way through. You pop right out, it's but you don't get stuck at all. You drop into the execution yard, which is unsurprisingly empty when nobody's being beheaded. Oh, if mm. you were actually out there being executed right now, it would be a huge crowd. But right now, they can use this area for empty. more events. <laughs> This is the sort of forward thinking that will come when you steal your throne back. When I am king, the execution yard shall be used every day. There will <laughs> always like, be a crowd at the execution yard when I am in charge. But for, like, festivals and stuff. <laughs> the yeah, festivals okay. of death! <laughs> Carnivals! Cotillions! Carnivals of terror! Cotillions of murder! <laughs> fundraisers of blood! <laughs> You, you race really gotta, for the. It's called, it's called a blood drive. <laughs> yeah. You race for the path out. Maybe you grab an axe on the way. Could be a fun idea. And sure. escaping your own castle, your home for your entire life, the place where you grew up. Well, actually, that kind of sounds like what most people do, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. Maybe yeah. you'll come mm. back. Maybe you won't. Maybe you'll forge a new adult life. But for now. You sneak around the perimeter to the main gate where your mysterious servant Fred said their people could be found. They give you a bit of a raised eyebrow at the greasiness, but they don't question it too hard. Does Brendan give us our sandwiches now? Oh, there'll be a feast, a, a veritable feast waiting for you at the safe house. 
-hmm. and I'd like to roll to attack to dome Sydney with a crossbow (laughs) that one of the the revolutionaries gives me. (laughs) Let's hold off. Let's get you to safety first, and then we'll worry about that. Escape today, maybe revolution tomorrow. Revolution always, baby. (laughs) And that's the end of the room. Well done. And we Woo. end with by giving each other a greasy high five. <laughs> and we just slip, slip and fall. <laughs> Headbutts. Uh, oh, oh, brother! I don't think these two are gonna save the kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone who backed us now is having second thoughts, oh. and we pan away. <laughs> Thank you for listening to Escape This Podcast. Don't forget to tune in next week for Podcast This Escape, where we debrief with our guest and discuss the escape room that we just escaped from.